Let's jump into the Cold Steel Catalog for this old school net and fancy knife review. This one is from 2010. It will serve the purpose. And I still love the Cold Steel Catalogs. Well done. Good pictures, cool layouts, good write-ups on the blades, specifications clearly shown along with prices. No games. Great job, Cold Steel. That's why I show it on my videos, guys. I don't mind opening with a cool looking product like that. Speaking of cool products, check it. Hard use folder, Recon 1. Previously reviewed, highly recommended here in the Nut and Fancy project. Showed you the clip version, showed you the Tanto version, and by way of reality check, there's the plain edge clip version, my favorite in the series. Wearing the lanyard from, I think that's a Wilson Combat lanyard. Very cool blade, love it. Great job, lightening it up. What have I always harped on in my knife reviews? Wait, wait, wait. Well, that's not the only thing, but that's one of the things that I did not so much dig about the original Recon 1. Look at my review, too heavy. Same thing I said about the also excellent new, well actually, the newly redesigned AK-47s are excellent, but I was gonna say the original AK-47s, I didn't like them so much. I never broke it out in its own review because I didn't like it so much. New versions, however, here they come, plain edge, large version. Actually, I guess they only do plain edge. Excellent. Oh, that's just a beautiful blade. And then the mini, great EDC blade, much used in the Nut and Fancy family. My son, Last Suspect, absolutely loves this blade. He carried it on the backpacking trip, Summer Snow. Look it up. Cool, man. Great blades. Uh, and yeah, I'm stoked because they ditched the completely unnecessary steel liners in the blades. In the case of the AK-47, you could say they ditched uh, the all-aluminum handle, which some guys really loved. I wasn't one of those guys. Um, I just didn't. And I like the, the triad locking mechanism as opposed to their old one. I think it's better. I think it's stronger. Love it. I'm going to talk more about that here in this review. And I need to complete this series on these excellent newly redesigned blades. I say newly within the last couple years. So Recon 1 talked about the vids out there, AK-47, and now whip sound, deal with it, the American Lawman. Now I've got a review out there on the old American Lawman, this one right here. That's the old version. Couple things I did not like about it. Can you guess? Huh. Steel liners, maybe? Yeah, steel liners, exactly. Didn't like it, said so in my review. I didn't like the weight. Not so much. You know, and I, I think I talked about the deep cut out there that was just kind of aesthetic only. The new version has that. But, to their credit, Cold Steel lightened it up. Okay, they watched my review. Uh, don't know, probably. And they lightened all three of these up and basically took the design in the direction I wanted to make them uh, or take them. And that is making them lighter without losing strength. And welcome to the newly redesigned, in my opinion, much superior new version American Lawman. And this is my review on that blade and it will complete, at least for now, the update on these amazing blades. And you're going to get a ton of knife for your money with these versions ton of knife. These are the knives that excite me, guys. These are the knives that, you know, I just start looking at them with the camera off and I go, man, I'm, I need to do a review on this. The words are going to flow because I just dig the blade. The American Lawman is just like that. The new version. Most excellent. Jumping into the details, I'll try to make this as succinct as possible. No promises. Philosophy of use has not changed. Old version, new version. It is a hard use tactical folder. Tactical folder? What do you mean? Oh, come on. Do you need to ask after all the reviews? It's an emergency defensive blade if you need it. In fact, that's exactly how Cold Steel markets this, is a defensive blade for law enforcement. Hence the name. You know, their catalog write-up says the same thing. Law enforcement knife, cop blade. Of course, civilians can come along for the ride. Um, it's the type of blade you absolutely positively, I'm talking tactical folder, not necessarily this knife, a tactical folder, you don't want to have it slip out of your hand, number one. So it has to have a really effective traction plan, in my opinion. Number two, it has to have a very effective lock. That lock cannot fold on you. Okay, if it does, bad things could happen. 
Now, I've reviewed some knives um, here on the table in the Nut and Fancy Project, which I classified as tactical folders, and their lock wasn't anywhere near the strength of um, these knives, the American Lawman, the triad locking mechanism. So I'm not saying that it has to be like fixed blade, but ideally it will not fold on you. Okay, we'll talk about that in strength more. Weight. This one was 5.6 ounces, I believe. Sometimes I've thrown on my scale, I think you get a 5.8 out of it. I'll just say 5.6. 4.4 is the improvement in the new American Lawman. Round of applause for Cold Steel. Thank you very much. Golf clap. Golf clap. Thanks. Awesome. Awesome job. Why is it so awesome? Well, that is a, you know, that's a substantial amount of weight, in my opinion, for me. Oh, nothing fancy you in the weight issue. I know, I've heard it a thousand times, but I do not relent. I'm very consistent in it. And I think because I apply pressure, and uh, you guys too that come along in the Nut and Fancy project, we, we get redesigns like this. Awesome blades, the American Lawman, which is, I don't think, any less strong than this one. I know some of you guys may disagree. Well, Nut and Fancy, you know, torsional rigidity is going to be lost when you lose the steel liners. I don't think so. You know, witness the cold steel testing videos on these new generation knives, and uh, I ain't seeing no failures. And like I've always said, the cold steel videos proof of concept videos, if you ask me, are real. They're not hyped. They're just what they are. You may, you know, not like the bragging that Cold Steel will do against other manufacturers, understood, but it's real. I'm talking the capabilities of the blades. Hard use tactical folders, primary POU for the American Lawman, just like it was for this one. Probably the full size version, a little bit big for me, maybe a lot too big for everyday carry. The good news is if you don't like that, go with a mini. I don't have one of those, but there's a mini American Law, man. Weight on that is 2.6 ounces. Okay, that'll be along the lines of the mini AK. What was the weight on that? That was 2.9 ounces. Virtually identical. Same size, same, you know, more or less than that. Great EDC blade. Good tactical folding choice right there. Uh, collectability, yeah, if you want to cool, understood. You know, you can collect them in that Cold Steel every so often changes their designs. Okay, by the way, uh, I won't bore you guys with a bunch of time on the specifications. It's a three and a half inch blade. Okay, three and a half millimeters thick, and both of these blades are nearly identical. Here's the new version. Actually, I switched them. Uh, this is the old version. This is the new version. The blades are almost identical. Drop points. Love the drop point. Always have, always will. It's just such a highly useful blade design. It's got good belly for slicing. It's got a good tip, adequately strong. And I put this one through some hardcore cardboard tests. Yep, this is the old one, but the blades are similar. I'm going to bring it up to the camera so you can see the wear and tear on the Teflon finish. Yo. Yep, Just thump this thing. Cutting cardboard. See how it would do. Like all cold steel blades, out of the box, it comes razor sharp. How does the OS 8 blade steel do in heavy duty, duty cardboard cutting? Uh, let me see. If I were to rate it one to five stars, I would say probably three and a half. Keeping it real. Three and a half stars, but that's about it. what I would expect OS 8A steel to do. But nothing fancy. That's special OS 8A steel, isn't it? You know, it's sub-zero quenched. Did you get that right? Sub-zero quenched? Yeah, it is. Still OS 8.8 steel. You know, it's not a miracle steel. After about, I don't know, the eighth pass or so, and I'm I'm cross uh, I'm sorry, I'm cross grain cutting on the cardboard. In other, in other words, going against uh, not cutting with the ridges. I'm going against them in a lot of the, the tests to maximize wear and tear. See what it would do. Vacuum heat treated, sub-zero quenched. Um, yeah, it does a good job, but it needed. I could tell I needed more force after about the eighth pass. It could still cut. I'm just using more force. Okay, it's it's a good blade shape, by the way. Uh, I already talked about shape, but I'm talking the grind, the hollow grinding. I still say the full flat grinding. You know, is my favorite. Always has been. Here comes uh, Spider Co Delica FFG, just because it's my EDC for the day. This is a better slicer, in my opinion. This is a close second. Good tip, I think I talked about that, and I conducted some stabbing tests with it. Uh-huh, worked good. No failures, no wear and tear, no breakages. 
and I think I stabbed right into the dirt several times too. You can see the Teflon coating will wear off. Depending on what kind of hard use you put it through, it might be fast, it might be a long time, but it's not perfect. It's not a perfect coating. I think they conducted a poll in 2010. Hey, what do you guys want, bead blasted or Teflon? I think the majority of Cold Steel guys said, let's just go with the Teflon. We like it. So that's why it's wearing it in 2011 as well. Who knows what the future holds? I don't mind it. Wear and tear is normal. It's a badge of honor in my opinion. Go check out the Recon 1 in Tanto. Oh man, that's the one I, I was batoning with. Yep, that thing got wasted. I'm talking uh, the finish got wasted, not the knife. Uh, pretty cool, actually, if you ask me. The wear and tear, I don't mind. If you really don't like it, I think I said this in the Recon 1 review, peel it off, buff it off, You know, pop your blade out, take it apart, and then just polish it. How cool would that look? Very cool. Here comes a new one again. Again, these are identical shapes. I got so many knives on the table, it's hard to tell them apart. Okay, uh, hollow grinding good, good belly, but what do you know? Bummer. No jumping? Dudes, you took the steel out and then you took away the jumping. What up? Well, whatever. This is the old, this is the new. No jumping at all on the blade. Aesthetic milling on the G10 handle on the new model, American Lawman, and yeah, it provides a little bit of traction. Dig your thumb fat in there. It works. It works. There's something there. We'll talk about the handle, how it makes up for it, and just the deep finger grooves that it provides. Um, great, great blade shape though. Three and a half inches. Is that too short for a tactical blade? Eh, kind of on the borderline, to be be honest with you. I think I kind of like a longer blade size. Where is it? Oh. I got it as my defensive blade today. Check it. Police G10 by Spyderco. Now that is a blade for a tactical use. You can see the differences there. Kind of two different knives, you know. I understand. I'm just showing you for the blade length. By representation. Speed. I think I dinged this on the original American Lawman. Maybe it's a function of the triad lockback. You know, it's not a liner lock. You do have to overcome some spring pressure to deploy the knife. It seems to me the new model, American Lawman, is a little bit faster. Comes out more readily than the old model. Is it my own perception? Probably. Lockup. Solid. Solid lockup. Hard use. Tactical folder. No side to side. No up and down. Ah, the stuff that just makes me sigh with, I don't know, gratification. Great job. Cold Steel. That's a triad lock for you. I've talked about it in other reviews. You know, all, I'm going to use a mini AK as my pointer. The stop pin is what absorbs all the force. So you're transferring shock. It's not going to the lock bar. It's going right here to the stop pin. Great design, interrupted. And if you guys all, like I've always said, want to read more about it, go to the Cold Steel website. Grab one of their catalogs. They have all kinds of information on it. Triad lock rocks. Proven in my own testing with batoning one of the recon ones. It just would not give up. It didn't develop any problems afterwards. Again, it is what they say it is. You know, they do all kinds of spine wax, over uh, overstrikes with it. Keeps on trucking, no wiggle after hard use. And also after my hard use cardboard cutting, I didn't see any problems at all. Great lockup, great strength. I wouldn't expect anything less out of a triad lock these days from Cold Steel. Handle construction, great job. Let me get this AK off the table so I don't confuse you. Rounded corners now. I can't remember if I did, but I think I did. I kind of dinged it for having kind of squared corners, which I think is not ergonomic. It's not comfortable. It doesn't fit the human hand. They took care of it. Still a very wide knife, in pocket especially. See that? Old, new. Still wide. That's the plan form view. That's the way it is. That's okay. And I still am in love with the G10 that these new models, actually even the old one used it, excuse me, that uh, Cold Steel uses. Very aggressive, great, provides great traction, and yes, I think I've said it before, under the clip it can be problematic. By the way, two clips provided with your American Lawman. If you're lefty, righty, it doesn't matter, you can slam on the clip. I am a righty, so I put the clip right there. Oh yeah, learning from my viewers. Mm -hmm. My viewer said, dude, you can sand that G10 under the clip. I took your advice. I did it. Sanded the G10 on this American Lawman. My opinion, drum roll, no drum roll, is you're right. It totally works. 
Mm -hmm. Good job. Good suggestion. However, I will say, and I will maintain, it's not as cool as my JB Weld mod. Uh-uh. Sorry. Yeah, it's a lot more work. It just looks cooler. It is cooler, if you ask me. It doesn't change anything under the clip dimensionally. It's minor, I know. Uh, but the good news is, you guys are right. Whoever suggested that, you're absolutely right. You can sand under there. It works fine and gets rid of that problem. It's quite easy. Make sure you tape it so you have a nice demarcation line like that. Um, we're here. We'll talk about the clip. I like it better than the old model. The old model was ventilated like that. Same design. No Wizard of Oz issues on the clip. That is goofiness. Good job on that. Um, 6061 aluminum backspacer on this one. It's not an open flow through design. You can take it apart if you need to. Thank you very much Cold Steel. And you can adjust the pivot pin which I have never seen the need to do on an American Lawman. Old or new. Speaking of the handle, I think I was going to mention this. To make up for that lack of jimping, check out the grooves. Deep finger grooves. Yes, the old version had them similar, but you can go forward of the pivot, choke up on it for control, dig into the handle jimping, and it works. Both in forward, uh, forward grip and in reverse if you want. Lock show. That's probably not the best grasp. I'm fighting the tripod here. You get the idea. I think the ergonomics overall on the American Lawman new version, excellent. How about the thumb stud? Favors righties. You can see that, that it's more extended on the left side of the blade, which for us righties, we like that. No volcano issues at all. Very clean, easy to actuate. There's no occlusion whatsoever from the handle right there. Uh huh. Pops out. The only thing is, I forgot to mention this on the speed, is it's not waveable. That is, it can't deploy from your pocket, which the AK-47s can, which I really, really like about that, that it pops out of the pocket. Can dig in too deep with the, you know, the thumb plate there. I've talked about that. Um, but overall, uh, it comes out readily with that, clip, with that thumb stud. Talked about the clip. By the way, that clip holds firmly, not too big, not too short. Carries adequately deep. That's been a pet peeve of mine forever. You only have about that much poking out of your pocket. Durability. How about excellent? Unless you abuse it, do something dumb with it, it's probably going to last a very long time. Cold Steel generally has a pretty good warranty, too, if you do have issues with it. You know, all manufacturers from all makes and models, knives, guns, whatever, will have issues. It's good to know that they'll back it up. For what you're getting, though, I mean, for what you're paying, the amount of durability you're going to get with the American Lawman, or heck, any of the other newly redesigned, the AK-47, the Recon 1, uh, slam dunk value. Pricing on this one, we're going into the value talking point now. Dudes, a lot of knife for the money. Look in the upper right, where are we, right there. A lot of knife for the money. money. Look in the upper right, and that's where I recommend to go get it. Ballpark at around 48 bucks for the full size. If you're really lucky for the mini, maybe around 40, 42, something like that, great value, great value, love it. Um, are there other options out there? Yeah, I've shown them to you. Also, also Cold Steel products, the Recon 1, absolutely love it. That's a bigger blade. And to me, this is more along the lines of the size of a full-on, no excuses, tactical blade. Fresh. The Recon 1. Love it. AK-47, waveable from the pocket. You know it. Great. Which one would you pick, Nut and Fancy? Whew. That's a hard decision. Well, I'll tell you then. Between the three, if I'm going to put it in the POU of Tactical Blade, in other words, I'm going to carry it for defensive purposes primarily. Remember my, my whole loadout system? I normally carry a full-on Tactical Blade, and then I'll carry a smaller utility blade. Maybe like the Mini AK. Between these three, don't hate me. God, that's a hard decision. I would probably say AK-47 Recon 1 American Lawman. There you have it. Waveable from the pocket. Same utility blade shape as the American Lawman. Good belly, good clip. Um, fast, great looking, hollow ground, sharp. This one I actually like... A, slightly larger blade in that POU and this one uh, I still love the American Lawman these are very small differences I'm just telling you guys uh, but for this one maybe because it's 
a smaller blade in that POU. Now, if you say, well, you got to flex into an EDC roll, then the whole plan changes. And I'm not talking the minis, I'm talking full size. Then it would probably go, uh, between these three knives, not the minis, I would probably go American Lawman, AK Recon, for EDC rolls. and Because this is a better blade for EDC in. It's smaller, more compact. Yes, I'm still still deal, dealing with the width, but all of these are, aren't you? They're just kind of wide knives. And by the way, let's look at, I'm talking the width this way. Let's look at it that way. I think it's been improved a little bit over the old version. Eh, maybe it's about the same. I thought it was more narrow. It might be slightly, I didn't measure them. But there you go. But these are competitive options right here. And by the way, just for the heck of it, I'm gonna roll in a Spyderco Persistence, I think this one is. By way of contrast, this one Duracoated by MissionSpecCamo.com. Oh, isn't that hot looking? ACU pattern. But here comes the new American Lawman against it. You can see the differences in size. Okay, uh, would this be in the same category? Well, depends who you are. Liner lock, triad lock. You know, great knife, all around knife, you bet. You know, hard use tactical folder. Mm, I wouldn't say hard use, probably, I'm not saying the persistence, maybe the tenacious. Um, or the larger in the family would be better, but this one is better suited just because of locking mechanism. There you go, cool factor to end up the talking points and the nut and fancy old school knife review on a cold steel product, pretty high uh, for what you're paying. Now, is it as you know cool as a more eclectic blade that's going to be more expensive, maybe a Benchmade, you know, uh, or whatever other brand you want to throw up there, eh, it's probably not like that. I think of them as user knives. I'll get these off the table not to confuse you. I think the American Lawman is a user knife. You're going to put it in use and you're not going to feel, feel guilty about it. Not for the price you paid. Great speed. Well, I wouldn't say great, but uh, improved speed, at least to me. Uh, really nice handle. High traction G10. Rounded corners. Excellent clip. Deep choils for control. No jimping, that's a small hit on it. Still the excellent blade shape, decent steel, excellent thumb stud. That is the American Law Man, and it is another win from Cold Steel. Worth the money, highly recommended. That's my review, see you guys.